to the group of scientists who privately discussed signs COVID-19 may have been genetically engineered, but publicly insisted a lab leak was a conspiracy. One of those scientists is the University of Sydney's Professor Eddie Holmes. He publicly told you this. Sydney University's Professor Eddie Holmes, who helped map the genome of SARS-CoV-2, went even further last month with a statement to say... There is no evidence that SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19 in humans, originated in a laboratory in Wuhan, China. And the CSIRO, where the two Chinese scientists once studied bat viruses, agrees. Telling MediaWatch... Research of the genome has found no evidence of laboratory manipulation and there is no published evidence of this virus having been previously identified. Last month, Professor Holmes also had this to say in a webcast. There are a number of really clear reasons to believe this is not in any way a lab construct or a lab escape. It looks for all the world, and I'm certain it is, a natural coronavirus that's come from an animal in a natural setting. There's nothing in there at all that, that is a signature of laboratory manipulation. So I think we can pretty safely put that, um, that those conspiracy theories to bed. Safely put that conspiracy theory to bed. And he told the Sydney Morning Herald in October 2020, our conclusion was no, we couldn't see anything to indicate this could be anything other than a natural event. But privately, he was discussing the possibility of a lab leak with international scientists. He said this to his colleague, Christian Anderson, in April 2020. Let's face it, unless there's a whistleblower from the Wuhan Institute of Virology who's going to defect and live in the West under a new identity, we are never going to know what happened in that lab, never. Addison had expressed renewed concerns that he wasn't convinced that cell culture in a lab wasn't involved. Holmes in that correspondence still felt that natural origins was likely correct. In a private email two months before this, Holmes wrote to one of his colleagues, the director of Columbia University's Centre of Infection and Immunity, Professor Ian Lipkin, on February the 10th in 2020, he wrote, I favour natural evolution myself, but the furin cleavage site is an issue. In this email chain with Ian Lipkin, Holmes says that their, Lipkin, sorry, Lipkin says that their paper is well-reasoned and provides a plausible argument against genetic engineering, plausible. And then Lipkin adds, it does not eliminate the possibility of inadvertent release following adaptation through selection in culture at the Institute in Wuhan. He writes, given the scale of the bat coronavirus research pursued there and the site of emergence of the first human cases, we have a nightmare of circumstantial evidence to assess. In this very same email chain, Holmes, Eddie Holmes then replies, I agree. It is indeed striking that this virus is so closely related to SARS, yet is behaving so differently seems to have been pre-adapted for human spread since the get-go. He says, it's the epidemiology that I find most worrying. And even when the lead author on this Proximal Origins paper, Christian Anderson, submitted their paper to Nature, he told the editor that he couldn't rule out a lab leak. He wrote in an email to Nature editor Claire Thomas on February the 20th, Unfortunately, none of this helps refute a lab origin and the possibility must be considered as a serious scientific theory and not dismissed out of hand as another conspiracy theory. He wrote, we all really, really wish that we could do that. That's how this got started. But unfortunately, it's just not possible given the data. And another co-author, Robert Gary, wrote on the 5th of February, and I quote, Accidental release is a scenario many will not be comfortable with, but it would be irresponsible to dismiss the possibility out of hand. Yet publicly, we were all told by many of these scientists that a lab leak was a conspiracy. Eddie Holmes also didn't disclose as a potential conflict of interest on this Proximal Origins paper that his name was on sequences from a January 2018 paper about bat coronaviruses 
alongside a Wuhan Institute of Virology researcher who was a former postdoc student of his. The paper was rejected by medical journals and science journals. It was never published. Holmes said he forgot all about this. He blamed it on his bad memory in an online interview in September 2022. And it shows my, my, my bad memory. So what happened was in late July this year, I think it was 163 sequen new back coronavirus sequences appeared on GenBank from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. OK, um, with no paper, just this kind of posting. And the, the really shocking thing is on the GenBank submission, my name is on the GenBank submission, right? And so when I saw this, I thought, what is this? I, I could not, I couldn't compute thinking, why, why am I on this, right? And then I look back and then it turns out there was actually a paper um, that was never published. And I'll tell you the story. It's quite an amazing story. So I, I had an ex postdoc called JQ, or J, I call him. He used to, he was at me at Penn State and then he went to Sydney with me. Then he moved to win his virology for a couple of years and then he moved to Shanghai. He's in Shanghai, very, very smart guy who mainly worked on endogenous viruses. In my head, he's an endogenous virus guy. But he did this one study study he was involved in on, the, on these bat coronaviruses that they'd, se that they'd sequenced. And it goes on, the unpublished paper included the partial sequence of RATG13, which is one of the closest known genetic relatives to SARS-CoV-2. I think it gives you a snapshot of what they were working on in that lab the year before the pandemic starts. RATG13, RA4991. That's there. And critically, they only have the RDRP and I think ORF8. There's no spike protein for that, in the, for that virus. It's not there. It's not, they, didn't, they didn't have it at that point. Okay. And most of all, what this paper shows you is what they're working on. And it's SARS-1. Holmes's central claim is that the Wuhan Institute of Virology has no progenitor virus to SARS-CoV-2, no virus that could have been used to make COVID-19. But declassified intelligence has repeatedly said that the Wuhan lab was working on top secret projects that are not in the public domain. And we know that the Wuhan Institute of Virology took its virus database offline in September 2019 and has never made it public, even to health officials trying to investigate the origins of the virus, including the World Health Organization. Now, Eddie Holmes's colleague on the Proximal Origins paper, Ian Lipkin, well, he's since walked away from it. He told the former New York Times science writer that he was concerned that dangerous coronavirus research was happening in lower biosecurity level labs in Wuhan. It also looks like there was pressure on these scientists to publish their paper quickly and, and to downplay concerns about a lab leak. Take this email from Jeremy Farrer, a British medical researcher, where he says to Holmes, do you think in the report it's possible to dampen down further the conspiracy idea and make totally neutral thoughts? Eddie Holmes also sent an email on the 16th of February 2020 where he apologised to the lead author, Scripps Institute scientist Christian Anderson, for effectively finishing the paper without him. He wrote... Sorry the last bit had to be done without you. Pressure from on high. Christian Anderson also wrote in another email that he felt the process had been rushed, but there was pressure on them to publish. He wrote, I was actually in the desert when that got pushed out, so a little rushed in my opinion, but pressure from the higher ups to get it out. Those higher ups were Jeremy Farrer, who was in contact with Anthony Fauci, and head of the NIH, the National Institutes for Health, Francis Collins. Now, we only know about these emails because they've just been released. They were subpoenaed by the United States Congress. Now, any Eddie Holmes strongly denies that any of this was in any way misleading or a cover-up. He says these accusations are wrong, misleading, and suggest a lack of understanding of scientific concepts, process and rigour. In a statement, he said, it is both incorrect and deceptive to use selective quotes out of context. For example, in selective comments based on private correspondence recently published by The Australian, I was categorically not questioning a, a wet market origin, but the place where selection for the furin cleavage site occurred. This is clear when the context is provided. 
He writes that mounting scientific evidence continues to make it clear that a lab leak is an unsubstantiated allegation and was classed as extremely unlikely by the World Health Organization Origins investigation. He says, I stand by the conclusions made in the Proximal Origins paper. Calls to retract the paper are baseless and entirely unwarranted. And he's referring there to the fact that a group of international scientists are now saying that that Proximal Origins paper should be retracted. The University of Sydney also defended Holmes as an exceptional scientist and a world-leading authority on viral evolution. In a statement, they said these are selective quotes taken from private correspondence between collaborating scientists during a moment in time showing scientists assessing new information and evidence as it emerged. They say that ultimately Holmes and his colleagues concluded there was no evidence the virus originated in a laboratory, something Holmes maintains to this day. As I've already mentioned, some of his other co-authors, like Ian Lipkin, no longer believe this. They no longer stand by the Proximal Origins paper. Now, over the weekend, I published an interview with the man who was Anthony Fauci's boss during the pandemic, Robert Cadlick. His official title, he was the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response at the US Department of Health. Now, in quite an extraordinary admission, he admitted to me that he, along with Anthony Fauci and Francis Collins, actually wanted the scientists to turn the temperature down on rhetoric about a lab leak. He also said that Fauci wanted to downplay the lab leak to protect his own reputation because it was his institute that was funding gain-of-function and other risky coronavirus research in Wuhan. But meanwhile, the ABC is still refusing to properly cover this issue. Paul Barry told The Australian today that he won't apologise for calling me a conspiracy theorist and for attacking our reporting until a lab leak is proven. That's what he told Sophie Ellsworth's The Australian. Now, it's important to point out here that we've never said we know categorically where the virus comes from. We've just spent three years investigating what was happening in Wuhan when the pandemic broke out. This is incredibly important because the pandemic has killed around 7 million people and shut down economies and businesses. Yet, Paul Barry at Media Watch won't retract his comment that this was a conspiracy until a lab leak is proven. It's interesting that the wet market theory hasn't been proven. There's no evidence that the virus came from a wet market. No animal intermediate host has been found despite desperate efforts. So this is arrogance on the ABC, relying on flawed logic to escape accountability. And fair enough if it's any old program, but this is the program that passes judgment on the media industry and on journalists week in and week out. And later tonight, I'm going to bring you an extraordinary admission from a senior journalist at the ABC that they didn't examine the lab, lab leak theory seriously. They probably called it a conspiracy, just like Paul Barry, because of ideology. That's coming up later in the show. But here is a sneak peek from that admission. I feel like I remember being super dismissive of that very early, not even very early on, for a good while. I was like, that is just the most unhinged thing ever. And I reckon it was, I was overly influenced by the fact that there were some truly nasty and crazy people who were already deep down the rabbit hole. I probably didn't look at it dispassionately enough.